Last bunch of guys for the flight deck. Okay? What an office this is, right? Yes, absolutely, yes. You can have the front seat or the back seat or... Just three of you, is it? Uh, five in total. Oh, five in total? Yeah. Oh. Do you want the little lad to stand? Yeah, can do. Yeah. Where's the other two? Are they just coming? Or? There. You've got the captain sat on the left-hand seat, co-pilot or second officer where I'm sat, and the flight engineer sat over there. Mm -hmm. And he's the busiest chap of the lot. Right. Oh, which is... Yeah, so right. he's uh, kept busy all day. Um, the fourth seat where you're sat with just a spare could be used by sort of training captains, civil aviation authority people, or even passengers. You know, the days when passengers could come mm -hmm. up into, uh, yeah. before 9 11. Before 9 11, yeah, you know, we have a good authority. The Queen Mum used to come and sit up here with a oh, gin really? and tonic. John <laughs> Travolta was another regular visitor because he's a pilot, yeah. so right. you'd come up and talk to the crews, and you know, anybody could uh, do that. Uh, instrumentation, it's a bit all analogue. Looks quite old fashioned now compared to modern aircraft, but um, there you go. You've got the, what they call the basic T, you've got the artificial horizon, the compass below it, the uh, airspeed indicator and mach meter over on the left hand side, and the barometric and radio altimeters on the right hand side. So you know how high, so you, know how high you are, what speed you're going, and what direction you're going. Um, and it's exactly the same this side, so you can fly it from either side, no problem. You can also taxi from either side, this handle here on the left, same as I've got on this side. You can taxi it with the, you know, steer the nose wheel. The only thing you have to remember was your nose wheel is 35 feet behind you. So don't cut corners. Right. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise yeah. it could be a bit embarrassing uh, putting the nose, the main gears mm -hmm. on the grass. Uh, in the middle bit here, this is all the uh, instrumentation for the autopilot. All the autopilot controls and it's the same in Edmond in aircraft they've gone on the same lines in the center here the engine instrumentation you've got four Rolls-Royce Olympus engines one two three four and then you've got at the top you've got compressor speeds then you've got the uh, fuel flow EGT that stands for exhaust gas temperature so it's the temperature at the back of the engine and then this area is the ducts at the back of the engine when you go around the back you'll see the, the ducts there and the areas you've got a lever here a unique feature on this aircraft is its nose visor, nose cone. It goes up and down, as you're probably aware. In this position, this is standard cruise, where the visor is there purely for aerodynamic reasons, nothing else. Uh, it keeps the quiet, flight deck a bit quieter, because obviously at this angle, you're going to, you, know, you need to so keep how, how far does it drop? How, how it, well, the, the visor just actually translates forward into the... Uh, that's the first, so the first position you put it down, the visor will mm -hmm. go forward and hide in the front of the, uh, in the, in the nose cone. Okay. Okay. Next position, it'll go down to five degrees. That's for taxi and takeoff. So, you know, he's got a better vision of taxi around yeah, the aircraft, yeah. etc. Around the airport. And then the final position goes down to, to 12 and a half degrees. And that's for coming into land. Because he comes into land at uh, 14 degrees. Wow. And he's coming down a three degree grind slope, so it's effectively 11 degrees. What so kind of angle is this? It comes in fairly flat, a standard one, maybe one or two degrees, but yeah. then you've got slats and flaps. You don't have slats and flaps on this aircraft, so you, your speed range, you've got to do it by uh, angle of attack. Yeah. So, so it's a very, very efficient wing. The lever behold, below it, that's for the undercarriage. You've got four wheels on this aircraft, nose, two mains, and you've got one at the back. Why one at the back? Because there's a fuel tank at the back, and if you bang the tail, you could have a fuel leak and a fire. And they have the fuel lip tank there because that's one of the main jobs of the flight engineer, balance the aircraft. You haven't got a tailplane on this aircraft, so how do you balance it? And they do it by moving fuel from the centre oh, to the rear. And in that, see that, it's the centre of gravity indicator. So the mm. flight engineer spends a lot of his time moving fuel from the oh, front yeah. to the back mm -hmm. and vice versa to keep so the aircraft balanced. Yeah. Just the others, yeah. Yeah. Another thing he had to do was the um, intakes. And a jet engine won't take air at supersonic speed, so you have to reduce it to subsonic speed. So you're going at 1,350 miles an hour, you've got to reduce it to about 350 miles an hour in 11 feet. So that's 1,000 mm -hmm. miles per hour in 11 feet. And they do it by creating a shock wave. Ramps come down, creates a shock wave. The shock wave velocity decreases, pressure increases. So you get a win-win situation. You reduce the speed, and you also it's like having a turbo compressor on your car. You know, you've got a supercharger on your car, so mm. uh, going supersonic actually reduces the uh, fuel. You know the supersonic boom, would you 
here and feel that. Not, not here, you would underground. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, that's the thing, it, because it goes underground, it comes like a double bang. Yes. And it can be quite so that's why the were, photographs of the it was banned from flying on uh, over over overland, overland at overland, supersonic yeah. speeds that's what really one of the things mm. that killed the aircraft in yeah. many ways because you could only fly over over water mm. um shame really but you know why, why was the why are the legs on the plane so long why is the body of the plane because so of the angle you're coming in at okay yeah, that's the main okay, thing. Because it, the and they had, again, they had in design, they had an awful lot of vibration problems because it's so high. Mm -hmm. You're off the ground. The nose leg is very high, so you get a lot of, yeah, and you're going at 200 miles an hour, yeah. you get an awful lot of vibration. Oh. So, uh, you know, in the development of the aircraft, they had an awful lot of problems mm -hmm. in, uh, in sorting that out. Yeah. The other thing it does, mm -hmm. it expands. Final to bed by four to five inches. So if you look, if you look um, for the back, five it, it, yeah. Was somebody was it somebody trapped or was it just a story? The, uh, the uniform or something? Well, could it, well what, they, what they do? See that's you there. You can actually see it there. Let's see oh, on yeah. the picture. It's yeah. it's, it's up right up close oh. now, isn't it? What, you can't there, there. Yeah, yeah, you can't there. put your hand there, can you? Well, no, there's a little bit of a gap there, but not much. <laughs> on the so on the photograph, you can. And if I show you the other oh, photograph, right. I'll show yeah. you. Yeah. I'll show you the next yeah, photograph. It, they put the hat in there. That was their sort of oh. party piece, was to put the hat in. I see that. So that's the expansion. Yeah, the expansion. Four so to five a, inches so in flight. Yeah. Feet, yeah. yeah. So, sorry. That's a sixty thousand feet. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you expand by four to five inches, and then of course when mm. you come back down again, it contracts. I mean, from an engineering point of view, uh, it caused quite a few fuel leaks and things like this. Mm. It has to be a special paint on the aircraft, but you know, stretches, metals. It's, it's made of, as John's probably told you, an alloy called hid hidium aluminium, a very special alloy. But if you got to, uh, as a Temperature sensor on the nose. If you got to 127 degrees centigrade, you had to throttle back. Otherwise, you could affect the strength of the alloys. Amazing, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 In fact, these are like sandwich windows. Um, yeah. They're like a glass and then a membrane and glass. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, like, it's like you're double glazing at home. You can get moisture in it, mm -hmm. and sometimes they get moisture in it. And I've read, you know, pilots saying they can actually see when they're going supersonic. It actually boils the water. The moisture boils because of when it's getting so hot. Yeah. Could it jet? Yeah, you know, if it had problems and it took off, this is probably too special. I don't know. My son flies seven three sevens, and he says you can't. Um, A small eject, aircraft, you can't. You can't jet. eject fuel from it, but this you could. Yeah, you could jettison. I don't know. There's this switches here for jettison. Yeah, you can jettison. Well, well. seven three sevens have to, have to use it up, don't they? You stewed round. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, seven fives you can't either. So, uh, some of the bigger ones you can jettison fuel. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't. Uh, you can't on the, some of the smaller ones. How many tons of fuel would it have had on? This was twenty-six thousand gallons of fuel. So whatever that is mm. in tons. To, uh, because you couldn't trim this without the fuel, so you'd be no. Catch no. twenty-two, wouldn't you? You yeah, can't jettison it because you couldn't trim it. That's right. The trim. Yeah, you trim it with the fuel. Yeah. Right. But what you can do, you know, what they do a lot of times is your pro son's probably told you, you can do overweight landings yes. if you've got a yes. runway long enough. You do an overweight yes. landing, yes, right, but then the you. engineers have to do a, an overweight yeah. landing check. Yeah. 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 You come in a bit faster, basically. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. Well, yeah. it's a bit dodgier. Yeah. <laughs> so who does he fly for? Thompson's first officer. Thompson. Oh really? David Henshaw, yeah. yeah all right. I used to work for Cookies and My Travel and all this, like Freddie Laker in my time. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, proper chaps. Yes, so I've been, been with a few, Air Europe. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, 50 I've, years in engineers. So I've got a lot of friends actually through oh, the Thompsons, yeah. yeah. In fact, I was on the yeah, set. Um, who's this captain who's. Uh, oh, I forget his name now. David Moorcroft or Minecroft or something. He was quite a bit. He taught David, he, he learned from through the Thompson's Hall. Oh, yeah, line. yeah. Then a good company to work for. A friend of mine, he's, a, fir good. he's a first officer on the 787. Yeah, he, the plastic pig, he calls it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that the Dreamliner? Dreamliner, Dreamliner yeah. Dreamliner. They, you know, it's well, called the a bit bigger, isn't it? More leg room is supposed to be. Well, I don't know how much, you know, I mean, I think the advertisements are. It's just a word, isn't it? Yeah. Dreamliner, yeah. Basically, it's a dreamliner for the, the accountants because it's, it's basically it's made of well, it's made of composite materials, so right. it's a lot lighter than other aircraft, so it doesn't it's burn as much fuel. Up. So, mm -hmm. from an accountant's point of view, it's brilliant. And that's why it's called it. You know, <laughs> it, I mean, it's good for the passengers because um, you know you pressurise the aircraft. Normally, they're about eight thousand feet, equivalent of eight thousand feet. That's why you get yes, drunker yes. quicker. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is at, the eight dreamliners at six thousand feet lower, so it's higher pressure. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact it's got. Um, Humidifiers on it, so 
as he said, you know, in the, when he flew the 7576, his hands used to get sort of crinkly skin with the Dreamliner. He does not have fears, isn't it? He was quite a bit.